Nearly every advertising platform we talk about on this channel has some form of machine learning targeting option, whether it's called lookalikes or similar audiences, that allow advertisers to take a root or seed audience, and the platform will then analyze that audience, develop a persona, and then go prospect and find new users who behave like that persona. Twitter is no different in that it also has this capability, but it is a little bit of an outlier in that it actually has two different types of lookalike audiences you can use on the platform. So in this video, I'm going to go through each of the different types of lookalike audiences you can make on Twitter and give you some tips to make sure that you get the most out of each. In Twitter ads, all of our targeting options live at the ad group level. So I've just gone ahead and created a placeholder campaign and I've skipped ahead to the ad group section. I'm not going to fill in any of the start date, end date, budget, any of that sort of thing, because it doesn't really matter. We're just going to go ahead and jump into the targeting options. So as I teased in the intro, there are two types of lookalike audiences you can use on Twitter. There's going to be one based on your customer lists and one based on followers. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the custom audiences lookalikes and how those work. So I'm going to come over here and just click on custom audiences and scroll down to that portion in the interface. Utilizing lookalikes off of custom audiences is going to be very similar to what you're used to on other platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, similar audiences on Google ads, that sort of thing. What you're doing here is providing a custom audience and then Twitter is going to analyze the users within that custom audience and then find new lookalikes of those users. Unlike a lot of the other platforms though, you can see here that Twitter only has this little checkbox down here to include lookalikes of your selected custom audiences. This is not going to be like all of the other platforms where you create your audience and then you either manually create a lookalike like you do on Facebook or LinkedIn, or the system automatically creates a similar audience for you like Google does. This is going to just be a checkbox where you can opt into using Twitter's lookalike modeling, or you leave the checkbox blank to not utilize it. The first thing we need to do is select which custom audience we want to use as the root or seed audience. So when you come in here and you click into the search box, you'll see that there are four different categories of audiences that you can create on Twitter, either app activity, an app activity combination, a list, or website activity. For right now, I'm gonna navigate down to list, and I'm gonna add this founders, co-founders, and CEO audience that's here. So now that we have this as the custom audience that we're targeting, if we want to use lookalikes, all we have to do is check this box right here. One downfall you'll see is that the audience estimate on the right says zero. There is nothing available there, whether I check or uncheck the lookalike audience box. And this is because of privacy issues. Just like on Facebook, when you add a custom audience, you're not going to be able to see the size estimate that's available for this. So unfortunately, we can't know how large the lookalike audience will be for your Twitter audiences. I've not been able to find any supporting documentation on what the expansion model would be for a Twitter lookalike audience. So it'll have to be something where you run the campaign, see what type of volume you get and go from there. I specifically chose this founders, co-founders and CEOs audience for this example, because I know for a fact that there are a good number of users in this audience. And I wanted to just show you that it's not going to tell you the audience size. If I navigate into audience manager, you can see this founders, co-founders and CEO list is here right at the top. The list says it's ready and it has 202,000 users on Twitter. So I'm confident there are enough users in this audience, but Twitter's not going to show us the number of users because of the privacy issues. If you want, you can include a number of different custom audiences to create the lookalike model off of. I do have a couple of website activity audiences here. They're relatively small, but again, we won't be able to see the different audience sizes anyway. But if I add those to my list and I check the include a lookalike of your selected custom audiences box, Twitter will find users based on all of the audiences I've included, not just individual audiences. If you're anything like me, you don't love the fact that we can't see the lookalike model versus the custom audience separated out. Like in Facebook, the lookalike explicitly says that the lookalike audience does not include the users that are in that root or seed audience. But this is not the case on Twitter. One strategy that I will be completely transparent, I have not tested out, but I would encourage you to test out if you also want to make sure that you're targeting only the lookalikes is to utilize the lookalike checked box, but then exclude the root audience that you're using. So let's look at an example of what that would be. Let's stick with just the founders, co-founders and CEO list. And we've got the checkbox here. But then if I want to try and exclude the seed audience itself, you can come up here to exclude. 
find the founders, co-founders, and CEOs list that's here, and then exclude those users from the campaign. As I mentioned, I have not tested this. If anybody wants to test it and provide feedback in the comments of this video, I would love to hear if this works for you and if you feel like it did reach only the lookalikes of that list and not the actual users who were part of the seed audience. But this could be one way to try and find new users only and not target the custom audience as well if you wanna give that a shot. So the custom audience section is going to be, like I said earlier, the model of lookalike audiences on Twitter that functions very similar to the other platforms. But there is a second type of lookalike audience you can use on Twitter, and that's going to be based on account followers. So let me go ahead and clear out this section. And now we're gonna scroll down into the second portion of this targeting features set. That's gonna be follower lookalikes. If I come and click on this information button, Twitter tells us that this will reach people with similar interests to an account's followers. Similarity is based on things like tweets, retweets, clicks, and more. So with this option, rather than utilizing a custom audience to start with, we're going to use a list of Twitter users that we want to find people who are similar to their followers. You're not able to target people's followers, but you can target people who behave like that account's followers on Twitter. So let's do a quick example. Let's say we wanna target people who are, I don't know, interested in digital marketing. So maybe we come down here into the follower lookalike section, and the first account we put in is we say, we wanna follow people who are similar to the followers of the Google Ads account. Just by typing in Google Ads, you can see a number of different options showed up, and I wanna use the second one here. Now that I've added that, you can see that we have between 800,000 and 979,000 users in this audience. And they're all going to be people who are similar to the followers of the Google Ads account. But we don't necessarily have to stop there. We can add a number of different accounts. And I actually really like Twitter's recommendations tool when it comes to this, because I think they do a pretty good job. So if you come over here, you can click this recommendations box. And now you'll get this full box of all of these suggested follower lookalike recommendations. There's a lot of accounts that make sense in here. Google Analytics, Search Engine Land, uh, Microsoft Advertising, PPC Hero. There's a lot of different things, but you can also tell that some of them aren't a perfect fit. If we're trying to go after just paid advertisers, Google Play and Google and maybe Moz aren't the best fit because they're either very, very broad or Moz is a lot more SEO focused. We're not quite in the same realm that we want to be. But I do see Microsoft Advertising here, so let's go ahead and add that one in there. And now you can see that we've added a new one. We have a completely refreshed list of accounts that are gonna be in here. We've now got a little bit more specific. We see that PPC Hero has jumped up quite a bit, but we do have a number of other options that have come into play. And I think it's getting even better because now we've got individuals in here as well, like Jenny Marvin, Kirk Williams, and what do you know, Joe Martinez is in here. So let's say that we wanna go ahead and add Joe. And now we can see that even more folks are showing up. Now I'm even at the top of the list because there's quite an affinity between Joe and I on Twitter. But we see a lot of other individuals and different blogs and different companies that are very focused on this digital advertising space. Just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and add me in here. Again, the list refreshes every time you add somebody else in there. We'll just go ahead and click done. And now you can see that since we've added more accounts, the range has actually gotten a little bit wider on both sides. So if you'll remember, we started off with about 800,000 users, but now we're down to 762 on the low end. And we were, I think, at about 900,000 on the top end, but now we're at 931,000. So there's a little bit wider range that we have in here. Could be a little bit more specific, but there's also a little bit more inventory on the top end as well. But if you're gonna use this target audience, you're gonna find people who are probably pretty interested in digital advertising, but there are going to be some outliers that are in there. Just because somebody follows the Google Ads and Microsoft advertising accounts doesn't necessarily mean that they fit within a certain bucket. I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I follow both of these accounts. I would like to consider myself an expert, but I also followed these right as soon as I got on Twitter and got in the industry. So I knew basically nothing about online advertising. I followed these accounts just so I could learn more about digital advertising. So there's a lot of range within the specific user there. Joe and I do tweet quite a bit about digital advertising, but we also tweet a lot about just dumb stuff, honestly. Sometimes we get in fights on Twitter. There's a lot of different reasons to be on Twitter, and it's not always going to be 100% about digital advertising. So when you're thinking about the different accounts that you want to target, keep in mind that there are going to be a range of users that engage with that account for multiple different reasons. 
If you have a list of the individual users that you want to target for follower lookalikes, you can also do a bulk upload just by clicking this link. Twitter will open up this window here, and all you have to do is copy and paste usernames, either separated by a comma or individual lines, and include the at at the beginning of the username. It's really easy to bulk add a lot of Twitter accounts to this specific list if you want to. There are a couple of suggestions that Twitter has for these follower lookalikes that I want to go through really quickly just to make sure that you're going down the right path when you're choosing the accounts that you want to target follower lookalikes of. In this help article where Twitter outlines what follower lookalikes are, they also have a couple of tips down here at the bottom that I want to go through. The first is to aim to target around 30 handles per campaign to ensure that you're reaching a substantial audience. And then it tells you you can do the bulk upload of the handles if you want to. I like the idea of using as many different handles as you can come up with that are relevant. If it's 30, great. If you can only find 10 that are relevant to the types of things that you want, stick with 10. Don't add a lot of different users just for the sake of getting scale, but the more that you can add, the better, because Twitter is going to be able to find the patterns within those users a little bit better and target your ads to the right types of users. They then follow up pretty quickly with kind of the same thing that I mentioned about the range of users following the Google Ads or Microsoft Ads account. Target the handles that are most closely tied to your business. There might be some famous individuals or companies with millions of followers, but they're not necessarily all aligned around the same topic that's relevant to your business. Again, that would be like targeting Google when trying to find people who are interested in Google advertising. So make sure you're picking the more specific accounts where possible. One example that I like to give of this is that if you're trying to target somebody who is using a software as a service, let's say Shopify, this is a very big company, lots of people use Shopify, and you're trying to target people who are like the people who use Shopify, maybe don't use the at Shopify handle, maybe use the at Shopify support handle, because people who are engaging with the Shopify support account are likely the ones who are actually in Shopify day to day, and are the ones who are needing any type of assistance with the platform, rather than just following the company as a whole. Depending on how large companies are, there could be lots of different Twitter accounts that you can follow. You saw the example for Google, they had everything from Gmail, Google, Google Ads, Google AdSense, all this sort of thing. Don't be afraid to utilize that Twitter recommendations tool to discover some of those more narrowly focused accounts that are coming from the same business that you're trying to target. Lastly, Twitter suggests focusing on segmentation. First, don't use the interest targeting when you are also utilizing the follower lookalikes. This is just a best practice from Twitter. It's not necessarily something that I would categorically suggest, but they say that this is how it works best for them. So if you want to try and do some sort of interest targeting, maybe separate that into its own ad group or campaign and let your follower lookalikes audience work by itself. Second, make sure that you're segmenting the handles into different categories where you can. If you've seen some of the videos that we've done on putting together Google custom audiences, sometimes we have different strategies around trying to target people who have followed your brand or your competitor's brand or certain industry related websites. If we stick with the digital marketing example, maybe we want to put together three different types of audiences. First, could be putting together a list of individual users like Joe and my Myself and other industry speakers to target lookalikes of the individual users' followers. Another audience could be based on the companies, people following Google Ads, Microsoft advertising, anything like that. And then a third audience could be around industry-related news. In some of the examples, you saw websites like Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal, PPC Hero, lots of industry publications. So maybe those are three separate types of follower lookalike campaigns that you try and create and target individual users that way. Just like any of the other strategies we talk about on this channel, I encourage you to go out, test it in your own account, and see what type of performance you get. I'd love to hear how either the custom audience targeting option that I mentioned before works, or how you're finding the follower lookalikes to perform compared to a custom audience lookalike, or how lookalikes on Twitter are performing compared to your Facebook or LinkedIn lookalikes. See how the different platforms work. There are certainly lots of different machine learning options that you have out there, but I do really like the different options that we have on Twitter. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.